How's it going guys? So today I'm finally getting around to installing the e-track in my trailer so I can strap down that new toy that we got for Christmas. So, so apparently my SD card is full on the camera. Let's try this again. So here's the Arctic Cat, formerly known as Textron Off-Road, Wildcat XX. Now this is a 64 inch machine and in this seven foot wide trailer it does fit but it's tight. I tried to cheat over to the right as much as I could because I wanted to give myself a little more space over there on this side to open the door, but you can see it's still really tight. I ended up kind of doing a Bo Duke climbing out the window, but at least it fits. I was really worried buying that new trailer and a new side-by-side -side. if they didn't fit together. That was not going to be good. Now this machine is pretty big. It's like 11 and a half feet long. It's longer than a Polaris. You can see I try to get myself like six inches or maybe nine inches at the back between where the door is going to be when it's closed and the back of the machine. And then here's where it ends up at, at the door, side door opening. So it's not bad. This is a 14 foot long trailer with a very soft V nose and it leaves me a few feet up here to, uh, to put my camping gear and everything. So I'll be able to put all my camping gear and all that stuff in here. I'm going to use the um, e-track so I can just run the tire straps right over the tires to conserve even more space. And then we can put my son's little Honda 250 in the back of the truck. So that way we can haul everything and then when we get to where we're going we can unload the machine and use this as a camper. That's the plan anyway. So now i got to take some measurements and figure out exactly where I want to lay this e-track. And then I'm going to start bolting that stuff down in here. But, man, right now, I'm just happy this thing fit. I was a little bit paranoid about that. These Wildcat XXs are pretty big machines, but it works. He loves that thing. He got a lot of stuff for Christmas this year. Lucky little boy, but I think that was by far his favorite. So let me show you what I've got going on here so far. So I put the Wildcat XX up in my 7x14 enclosed trailer and I used a pencil to mark the center line of the axles or the tires so that I knew exactly where I wanted to lay my e-track. I tried to like cheat it over to the right just a hair because every inch counts over on that side when you're trying to open the door and get out of the machine. So everything's over just a little bit. But once I made my marks and got it all lined up um, i had four of these five foot sections because that's all i need right now to get the machine in here and i got some of those e-track rings to use the strap with but i left myself enough space here in the middle for another three foot section to go in there so in the future if i decide to fill that in i can just buy a couple of three foot sections and they'll fit right in there perfectly now, as far as securing this thing down, I bought some self-tapping screws that were a quarter inch by one and a half inches long. Uh, here they are. So everywhere that there is a frame brace, I ran some self-tapping screws into the frame. And the frame on this particular trailer is on 16-inch centers. So, you know, every 16 inches I've got screws that go down into the frame. Also on the ends, I used some of those backing plates. Uh, they're stainless steel covered in zinc. They're zinc coated so that they can resist corrosion up underneath the trailer. And uh, that way I've got the load evenly distributed on the ends also. So this thing is tied down as secure as I can get it. And now I'm just gonna go along and put regular wood screws or lag screws in some of these other holes. And once I do that, these things shouldn't go anywhere. They should be extremely strong. Let me get up under here and show you the backing plates. So on the backing plates, obviously all you have to do is get up in the trailer and drill four of your holes down through there. And then you just get up under the trailer and put this backing plate on. You gotta use some washers. I also decided to use these nylock nuts so that they would be resistant to backing off and coming loose. And that way, 
like I said, the load is evenly distributed and uh, this is not going to pull out. If this comes out, the floor is coming out with it. So I figure that should do the trick just fine with those backing plates and the ones that I put down into the frame should be just fine. So I'm going to finish up now. I'm going to take the drill and like I said, I'm just going to run some regular lag screws in here where there's not any frame bracing just to give it even more support. Uh, but that Wildcat XX is an 1,850 pound side by side. So I wanted to make sure that I get these things really secure. Because uh, obviously you don't want that thing shifting around on you when you're going down the road. And then, you know, in the future, I'm going to get some, uh, maybe some E-Track or something to put on the walls too. So I can do some organization, you know, place to store straps and E-Track accessories and you know, heck, I might even put a broom in here so that when you're off-road and your machine is muddy and you pull it out for the day so you can camp in here, you know, it'd be nice to have a broom so you can sweep your floor out, you know? Possibilities are endless. Might get some cabinets and put up here. But, uh, yeah, one thing at a time here. It's coming along very, very nicely. So, I'm going to get finished up here. If I can get my assistant to help me. Come on, Dixie, we got work to do. Oh, and I forgot to mention... Uh, as far as what I used. So these are self drilling screws. They're a quarter inch, one and a half inches long. And I found that these were pretty much perfect for drilling um, through the floor and into spots where I had a frame cross member. Uh, so those worked pretty good for that. Now in spots where I didn't, and I was just drilling straight into the floor, I used a quarter inch by one inch long lag bolt. This was uh, the perfect length. Um, once I drilled and, you know, screwed the E-Track down to the floor, if you get up under the trailer, just this little bitty end right here is the only thing you could see starting to break through. Um, so I guess technically you could use a three quarter inch length, but the one inch ended up working, uh, really well for me. So, uh, that's pretty much the hardware that I use. Now in those places where I had the backing plates, I used, uh, five sixteenths bolts that were two inches long. And you can use any kind of bolt you want for that, just as long as you can get those washers and nylock nuts on the bottom. So uh, as far as hardware, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, I used a, a corded drill. Um, you can use a cordless drill, but I found that it was a whole lot faster to use a corded drill. And obviously the reason for that is that you've got so many screws to put in because like every other hole you want to put a screw in the floor to hold that E-Track down really, really good. So you end up having a hundred or more screws. And if you try to use a corded, or excuse me, a cordless drill, then you end up changing the battery all the time, charging batteries up and waiting and all that. So a corded drill that you can just plug in and go ended up being a whole lot faster and I'm glad that I was able to borrow one of those from my dad because I didn't have one and it made that project so much easier. Plus the ones that you drill through the floor into the frame cross members, those can be a little tough also. You need quite a bit of power to drill through there and get it down into the steel. Um, so anyway, uh, corded drill and some of these bolts and screws here, pretty much all the hardware you're gonna need to do that job. So have at it guys. So after we finally got that job done, we decided to play around just a little bit. Oh my gosh, this truck is completely sick. This is kind of what I wanted to do to mine because it reminds me of when I was a kid. I guess those are the optional Mopar graphics. I didn't realize you could order those yet. They've got the Mopar two inch lift, the wheels, 37 inch tires. I love this roll bar in the bed thing is awesome but even the interior has some nice little touches i've got a white bezel on the dash there check out those seats well the reflection is kind of killing it but those seats are really cool too man it's like the 1980s all over again i absolutely love it I'll try to get a wider view here does that not just look absolutely awesome Man, I'm in love. Ready? 
Well, the guys on the Wildcat page told me to change the oil filter immediately, and it's a good thing I did. Check this out. That is absolutely unexcusable. It looks like there's gelatin inside the oil filter. I guess it's from assembly lube. Yeah, so needless to say, I'm not very happy about finding that on a brand new machine. And uh, got some pictures of it in a little video clip. So the next time I'm over there to my, at my dealership, I'm going to show that to them and make them document that. I'm glad I got the extended warranty because who knows what might happen to the engine later on down the road now. But that's just ridiculous. You know, Yamaha should never let those engines leave the factory with that issue. But again, I'm glad that I found it early cleaned it up, put a new filter on it, so hopefully it won't be a problem in the future, but that just goes to show you, you know, you never know what you're going to get, even when you buy a brand new machine. You got to do your own service. You got to learn how to do this stuff yourself and do it properly and take care of your stuff. You can't trust other people to do things right anymore. It's sad, but it's true. So anyway, appreciate you watching guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. And when we head back into the new year, 2020 coming up, we're going to have some cool videos for you guys, I hope. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, and I appreciate it. Thanks.